Welcome back to another episode of Classroom with Elite. This is the part of the video where I do a quick recap to remind myself what happened last time. But if you want to jump to the reaction, there's a timestamp below. Man, what the fuck was that ending? What the fuck was that ending? Key okay, key okay. No, they're made for each other. I promise, man. Just watch. There's so much better than Susan A. Fuck you. I got baited and now I got my heart. I got my heart invested in this relationship. This fictional 2D fucking imaginary relationship. When what happens, Anakut says, this is the last time I'm ever going to talk to you. Press X to doubt. Come on now. They're not going to actually be done just like that, right? Something will inevitably happen to the point where Anakut has to step in again. But maybe what he's saying right now, truly, he does mean it. But what led up to that moment, right? So the previous episode, we had a little bit of an interaction between Anakoji and Hiyori. Hiyori, is that her name? Am I getting it correct? You know, the Class C white, blue, uh, the silver hair girl? And they have a common interest in books. Now, I'm not sure if Anakoji is intentionally doing this, but right now what he is doing is he's... He's getting in with Class C a little bit more. Through this common interest, we're seeing that we're just talking about a mutual hobby and we're getting to know each other. But it gets to so good to the point where he already feels like, wow, I'm so glad I have someone to talk to, you know, these kind of things with you about. I have no one in Class C. Ryu would never listen to me about this kind of shit. He don't give a fuck. But you, hey, you're, you're into books. I'm into books too, right? Let's kind of become friends. This is great because not only just in terms of friendships that I'm not sure if Aonokuji even cares about, but if we have another in through Class C, and not just the girls that already got, you know, that already got smoked out because of uh, the events from the, the sports festival, right? Because our, our, I, I doubt they were gonna act as spies for Aonokuji again, not after what happened. But then again, we do have quite the leverage. If we show, like, the clip of them bullying K like that, would they get expelled? I don't know. What would they value more? The threat of getting expelled because of that? Or like getting shit kicked out of them by Ryu and... Uh, both seem like pretty shit options, right? And maybe Hiyori doesn't really like that kind of vibe in Class C. Why is such a nice, kind, calm girl who's just into books in Class C, the fucking Yakuza class? It's not like it's always her. It's not like it's her like decision to stay in it, right? I mean, she probably just got forced into it now. She has... I don't know. She seems like she has a decent position where Ryu can like, kind of like... Basically... Be like Ryu specifically mentioned, it's time to use her. So he trusts in Hiyori's ability to read people's image and kind of be able to, I like, guess, are they important or not? That's what we did when she brought up, uh, brought her to when Ryu brought her to the table, right? Fucked our coffee cups and then talked to Yukimura and Aonoko and say, "Hey, are these two special?" And Hiyori was like, "They are so beyond average. If you put them beside Ek, I couldn't tell the difference." Which honestly. Is a really good thing for Anakoji. That means he's doing a great job. But eh, I mean, if you looked at Anakoji without even having seen the anime, if you just look at a poster of all the characters in Classroom Delete and Anakoji's there, would a new person would ever believe that Anakoji was the main character or the puppet master? I guess not. It's because of what we've seen so far that I'm already kind of like inclined to think that Anakoji is special. What happens after? Well, the teacher lied to us. There is a visitor, but that goes beyond that. The teacher lied to us after. He, she lied to him after the fact. We'll talk about that, but the meeting with Papa Aonokoji. Now things get confusing because so far I've been referring to Aonokoji by his last name, but you know, his given name is Kiyotaka, but I never call him Kiyotaka. Now it feels kind of awkward for me to say Kiyotaka, but Aonokoji's dad is also Aonokoji. So I'm like, when I say Aonokoji, who am I talking about? Papa Aonokoji. I'll just call him Pops. Pops is extremely cool looking. He looks like, he looks like the leader of this world, like a president, right? He's got a nice little goatee, slick hair back, pretty cut face, and he looks quite intimidating. I'm sure he's very smart. He comes to the school asking Aonokoji, what are you doing here? You ran away from the White Room, my establishment. I still don't know what the White Room is. The only thing I can really guess is based on the flashback we've seen. It's the White Room. There's a bunch of kids in it, and they seem to be studying. And for some reason, some kids just like drop to the ground. So, are we doing like classroom of the. No, not the class. I was gonna say, promised for. Promised Neverland, right? You know how the system's like that where all the orphan kids are like super. I'm not really spoiling, am I? Maybe I am. Go watch the anime if you haven't and skip this part. Basically, all the kids are just studying their hardest to get the best test scores because the smarter they are, they get fit by demons, the brain test tastes better or something like that. What is the white room for? I'm sure it's to create superhumans that are extremely smart and then maybe they'll be sponsored to go on world just like 
the fate of the world depends on them because they're not put into positions of power in the world because what pop says is everything like in, I'm, I'm paraphrasing right now but he thinks that everything at the school is so pointless and trivial right he was he he, he, he mentioned something about the world order or like he compared how everything at school was so pointless and everything that he's working towards is so much grander in the big in the big scale of things my vision of what i want you to do is so much more important than this which makes me think it's like okay i mean what could be i mean this is not like a crazy you know shonen anime where we're defeating some kind of demon lord and you know getting world peace but maybe pops wanted really like smart kids to be in position of world leadership government politicians president of japan I don't fucking know. It seems like he's training those kids up for that, right? He goes to Anna Kojin and says, Hey, a butler died, by the way. And it's like, huh? Who? In fact, there's a lot more context to this butler that the anime didn't tell me that I was only able to get because if you guys mentioned in the comment section, not really spoilers, I guess. If this is light novel specific stuff that's already been, like chronologically, we've already moved past that and they kind of missed that in the anime. But I'm also paraphrasing once again, but something about the butler is um, basically the butler... I'm probably fucking up the story. The butler had like a son and his son was doing really well in life. The butler did some things to fuck the son's life over in terms of getting into schools for some reason that I don't really remember. And in turn, him wanting better things for his son eventually was the collapse of his child. And Aono Koji wants to like, um, he's at the school in honor of that butler because of what happened to his life. I think, again, I'm probably getting all the details wrong, but something along those lines, he's doing it in honor of that butler. Uh, he's burnt to death, he's, he's dead. <laughs> and Pops kind of says like, hey man, this is kind of your fault. I don't know how, but he just put a fire on himself. Maybe it was suicide. Maybe he couldn't cope with the reality that's been set around him. Or Pops fucking lit him on fire, I don't know. Cause it seems like he's kind of using this as like a threat. Like, if you don't come back, other butlers are gonna spontaneously catch on fire on Koji. How would you feel about that? Cold face, no reaction. But within, maybe there is some kind of response because of that story of the butler and Anna Koji and him being at the school in honor of his wishes, right? He wants him back, but he can't get him back because the school, well, I'll, I'll speak for that. I took interest in the worldly society rejected as pointless, right? Worldly society. What does worldly society mean in this context? A society... I don't know, it's just worldly society. It's probably just some kind of abstract goal of just a higher world where every human being is super smart, like all the kids in the white room and we don't have to get... We can just get rid of the trash and that's how we will lead ourselves as a nation in Japan as the main force. I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't know what this pops is thinking about. But what the funniest part of this, of this conversation is uh, when... <laughs> Pops was like, and because you are my most valuable, talented specimen. I've never even, like, I've never met someone as talented and gifted as you, right? And then Anakuji's like, don't even say that because you're my son, right? Because I know it's bullshit. And dad's like, yeah, I know it's bullshit too. I don't really give a shit about you. I just care about talented you are. And Anakuji's like, yeah, I figured. It's like, <laughs> what a fucked up relationship, right? This is more fucked up than Manabu and Susanne. If you compare Manabu and Susanne's relationship compared to this, then again, that's like sibling versus like father and son. Right, if we're talking about how twisted things, they were pretty twisted, but this is like, Jesus. There's no fatherly love. There's no love from the son to the father. It's just cold, calculated, ruthless. But that's how Pops has probably lived his life. All about the results, nothing else. I'll kill, I'll sacrifice everything if it means for the goal of worldly society that Aon Koji himself rejected. Why did he reject that? He's been probably indoctrinated all his life in the white room to learn about the worldly society of the goals, right? That the Pops has. But someone as someone as smart as Iron Koji probably realized there's some hypocrisy or some kind of logical loops. Maybe it just doesn't make sense. Maybe some things contradict each other and therefore your goal using this white room is fucked up. I don't really know. But the main point in this conversation is that Pops can't get Iron Koji back unless it's of his own volition. Aon Okoji has to basically sign a waiver saying, I resign from the school, which he would never do. And to my surprise, who comes in? Into the room is a guy named Sakayanagi, Arisu's dad. And this guy, based on the trailer and the opening, I thought he was Aon Okoji's actual dad. Only because of his hair. Like, there's not much similarity. It's just kind of like parted down. Kind of, it was that, because like he was on top of the roof 
with Aonokuji on his side against a bunch of suits. So I thought, oh, maybe the white-haired dude is Aonokuji's dad just because of the positioning plus the hairstyle. I was completely wrong. But he does have the best interest for Aonokuji. He comes in. He is the director of this class in the elite, the school, right? Former secretary of the white room. He ditched that. My guess is he realized how fucked up things were after going through it and, re and decided, I, I don't want any part of this. I'm, I'm out. I'm going away. But he had a seemingly a good relationship with Ayano Koji before, even this is their first time properly meeting as he does introduce himself as my name is Sakai and again, the director of the school. They do have past interactions because when I remember the flashback, one of the main doctors or one of the main people outside the room, the white room, was Sakai Anagi, right? So he has good intentions for Ayano Koji. He's protecting his independence here. Not only that, the way he talks, it's so polite, respectful. So subservient to Anokoji pops because, you know, that was like a boss relationship, but he left, but he's stern. Even though there's like a polite, soft tone, it's quite stern. And if you look at his face, she looks incredibly smart. The fact that, I don't know, because pops has always a strained face. He's always looking kind of angry or annoyed. And Saka and just, he's just smiling. He's just having the time of his life. It makes me think like, this guy is something special. This guy has to be one of the top endgame players right in in this classroom considering he's a fucking director after all right but the most important thing is he has the best interest in Ayanokuchi even though he himself says I don't like yeah you know my daughter Arisu right well yeah we get along well but I don't show any favors towards her don't worry about it but I show favor to you Ayanokuchi he didn't directly say that but I think it can be implied that Sakayanagi is looking out for Ayanokuchi right or else why would he even show up here I wonder what he's told Arisu, or what Arisu has told his, her, her dad, right? <sighs> Arisu does know what's up with the Puppet Master in Class D. At least I think she's... Well, Ryun did limit down the number of choices, too. Even though he's kind of thinking maybe Keisei and Ayanokoji are both maybe just like um, a little pawns to the actual Puppet Master. But I think Arisu has kind of figured out, right? Judging by her cheeky little looks and the little grin that she has in the conversations that she has teacher that kind of brings up Ayano Koji as such an important character. I think she's figured something out, right? Not that, would the director even care about this stuff? It's just like, this is just like high school drama. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 go on your classes, whatever. It's, it doesn't really matter to me. I wonder how involved he is in this, right? Sakai Anagi does protect Ayano Koji's dad, Ayano Koji, but then Pops leaves saying, he kind of threatens us. He's like, you know what? This one time and no more, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the L. But what are you going to do? What could you possibly do? Ayanokoji is enrolled here of his own independence, and there's nothing you can do to make him get expelled. Unless, what, is he fucking going to tell Ryu and all the secrets? <laughs> so probably not. <laughs> Ryu is talking to Ayanokoji, is that not? No, 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 no. I'm just trying to think, what kind of jurisdiction or powers does the Pops have to pull Ayanokoji out? And even if you did, what's the point trying to get someone out that has no interest in participating in the White Room anymore? The topic of the white room is mentioned in the middle of the conversation when not only mentioned it, but he also says it's resumed, meaning it stopped before. I don't know what the story implications that is. I guess there was some kind of pause before. Maybe it's because of after Anakoji left, they need to find new candidates. I don't know. But it's resumed again. I wonder if Anakoji's goal, or if, maybe not, because I know he just kind of wants his own freedom and independence, but would it be to destroy the white room to make sure that no one has to ever live the childhood that he had to endure because of how shit it was. Maybe I'm looking too deep into things, but from like a that seems to be like one of the most intuitive guesses you could make about the white room and what Anakoji has. At the end, we have our teacher of class B. I probably should know her name by now. I think it's something like Kabishiwara or Kashiba. I don't I don't fucking there's too many names, man. I, there's too many names. But you know, ponytail, big titty leggings, uh office suit lady. She lied to Ayanokoji. Ayanokoji deduced this based on the conversation that he had with his dad. And he seems quite upset at the teacher for daring to lie to him. To the point where he says, you, you have never been to class A as a teacher. But right now, the perfect opportunity has shown up. The right cards has finally fallen into your hands. And for you, you're basically getting carried by me. I'm tired of this shit. I want nothing to do with it. I wonder at what moment Aonokoji decided to kind of back off from this, you know, getting involved as the mastermind. I'm not sure exactly when it shifted. Even in the beginning of the episode, when he was talking to Susan, she... Susan asked, we're still going to Class A, right? And he's like, you're still going to help me get to Class A, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah. 
But after the meeting with the dad and during the conversation with this teacher, she was like, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Maybe the maybe the meeting with this dad was like a wake-up call. Maybe he realized, I don't know. Is he doing this to protect people? Is he doing this so that... Well, then again, the framework has been set. Susan is just on a, on a roll right now. Everything, operations, is just kind of automated at this point. Anokoji doesn't really have to step in as much anymore. And everything will still, I would imagine, go well. As long as Susan can continue to outsmart... Well, he only outsmarted Kushida, not really Ryun in that last battle, but... Does he really believe that we can get to Class A if he just backs off immediately? And if he does, what's he gonna do with this time? Just continue just getting 50s on all tests and just not do anything? Because at the end of the day, if he gets more involved, maybe some somehow it would get problematic to the point where his dad could pull him out of school for justifiable reasons. I'm just trying to think, why is he just cutting off ties so suddenly? And this is just after his birthday too, man. In fact, at the end of the episode when he's talking to K, it's such a sad scene. He's beside a Christmas tree all alone, right? Oh, also, there must have been a time skip if it's already Christmas. Maybe there was a time skip in the previous episode and now, but... We know how recently we just had the birthday episode, even though he didn't really do anything. K wished him happy birthday. But now, there's a toxic Christmas. I'm hoping on a fucking Christmas miracle that K and Anokoji have some kind of Christmas day. I don't know, something. Fucking give me, give me something to salvage this, okay? But he's sitting beside a lone Christmas tree. Just talking to Kay, saying, this is the last time we'll ever talk, right? He brings, up some, he brings up some good points, saying, you never really wanted to be my partner either, right? So, and everything was transactional. There's nothing serious. There's nothing emotional other than my fucking viewing experience, right? And he's saying, hey, this is it. This is the last time I'm going to talk to you. And Kay says, well, e this is cold even for you. I know how you operate, but isn't this too much? What happened, right? When he says, this is the last time we'll ever talk, Usually when we see Anokoji talking, we see his eyes, and they're just dead, same colored eyes. There's no expression, there's no life in them, right? It's just the same monotone eyes. But for some reason, they wouldn't even show us his eyes, right? It was such shaded in darkness that we couldn't even tell what he was... I, I think there's a little... Maybe it's me projecting my own feelings and insecurities, but I feel like there's a part of him that really hurt him to say, this is the last time we'll ever talk. And maybe this is completely wrong. Maybe he's like, fucking finally, good riddance. I don't need to hang out with these losers anymore, right? But I just feel like because of how the scene was portrayed, beside a lone Christmas tree, Christmas is around the corner, and time of celebrations and community and friendships, he's throwing all that away, and we can't even see his face when he's saying that. Maybe there's something more to it than meets the eye, man. I don't know. Shit's sad. Shit's fucking sad. But you know who's gonna save the day? Ryuin. I feel like Ryun's gonna do something that's gonna stir up trouble and Aonokoji has to step in and assume his role as mastermind. Now, this could be just a simple case of... Because, like, the picture of K was sent to Aonokoji, so Aonokoji knows that he has to do something about this, right? I mean, Ryun hasn't made his move, but if K does get into immediate danger, there's no way Aonokoji doesn't do anything about it. And by doing so, maybe he accidentally reveals his identity as the mastermind. And at that point, you know what? There's no point really backing out now because my identity has already been revealed. I might have just continued with the plot. I don't really know. Only one way to find out. Let's start today's episode. Let's watch. Okay, today's quote is, A man who cannot command himself will always be a slave. But the man who commands himself is, aren't you a slave to yourself? I don't know. These quotes are beyond me, man. Episode 11, we have... Oh! We're getting a replay of that scene. Maybe this is Kei playing it through her mind again. Don't say it. Don't say it, Kiyotaka. Don't do it. No, you need to be there. I, I, I need a mastermind. Your motivating factor has ceased to... Then we need a new motivating factor. I mean, you've been lying low the entire time. Are you, sounds like you're free now. I feel like that word free is important. What does freedom mean to you, Anakoji? The last time I talked to you. <laughs> Again, man. That shit was fucking cold, man. Nope. Uh, uh, is that it? I mean, at least you said morning, but... Man. Man. Man! Come on! Huh? Ryuin? Is it Ryuin? Oh! What's up, Classy? 
I want Koenji to do something about this, but he won't do anything. Trying to stoke up who the mastermind. <laughs> Koenji, like, I'm out. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Koenji. <laughs> Koenji. Oh, what's up? Suzne? They're interested in Koenji like that? Really? <laughs> what do you want, filthy peasants? About what? Hey, you're a weirdo! Me? Me a weirdo? Impure poppycock! <laughs> you have one chance to <laughs> take it back. Oh, my man's got a day. Comb his hair? <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs> that hair might. <laughs> Did you make him hold a mirror for <laughs> No, the mirror! <laughs> You dare break my mirror? More than the fucking tuition for each student here? It slipped. I just happened to slip like that. Everybody's showing up. Oh, what the fuck? All the key players are showing up out of nowhere. Hmm. Sure. What a coincidence. Yes, this is all Christmas party. Yes, absolutely. Is Arisu really about to defuse the situation? I mean, if they... Couldn't Rewin... Did... Can't Rewin order Albert to like break Arisu's other leg? Oh, and you think I'm the mastermind? I don't got time for that shit, man. You really think I'm the mastermind? <laughs> Well, he does have the brains, but he has no empathy towards the class to be, I mean, do something like that, though. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. My man does not give a shit about society. Zero effort, except the time that he has to clutch for himself for his own entertainment, such as on the luxury boat. Koenji, I want you to be... I need you to get in the game, though. This is the most Koenji lives, man, we've ever had. Hmm. Well, I had limited time on the yacht, man. I gotta fucking use all the gym in the pools. Lucky guess, yeah. Yeah, I don't got time for that dumbass peasant meetings, man. I gotta enjoy my time on the cruise ship. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's no matter what, you're never gonna believe him. There's always, like, a little bit of a chance. Mm -hmm. The loot. <laughs> You're too stupid to understand, Ryuin. Oh, his lack is like, what the fuck did you say? Mm. Uh, or, are we done? Yeah? Or, are, we, are we just done? I preached the quick would be Dragon Boy? Dragon? What does the dragon come from? How does Ryuin look like a dragon. Also, I just snickered there. He's like, ooh, this Koenji is shit-talking pretty hard. It sounds like you want some violence involved. Let's fight. Let's fight. I'll make you regret that decision tenfold. Myself and my pride. It's on the line. I'll knock out. I'll look out after me. Okay, come on. Please fight. Come on. Bite the bait. Bait him. Come on. Dude, I swear to God, if nothing comes out of this, nothing's gonna happen, right? Come on. He is insane. Yes, yes. Oh, Arisu. Dragon Boy, son. He likes a Dragon Boy work. Mm. Ryuin really gets annoyed. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna actually kill her? <laughs> yeah, come on, man. But Arisu really annoys Ryuin. I haven't seen... Dragon boy, what's up with you? No, Koenji. No, it's the other guy. I'm like Koenji wouldn't do it, right? He wouldn't. He wouldn't actually do it. But <laughs> Dragon Boy really upsets him. But I've never seen Ryuin this upset, unless when Arisu is in play. Ryuin's face of annoyance is what Susune looks like whenever Ryuin presses on Susune. <laughs> Koenji's going up. <laughs> I don't have time for you, Dragon Boy. I got a date. The finale, I mean, the season finale is also coming, man. One thing I noticed, I think Ryun also has shows more cleavage than any other girl in the school, dude. He's just having fun. 
My heart's doki doki. I had a coach make me use hard code doki. I think akin to first love. <laughs> Two master men, please re come on, reply. Come on, dude. Why are you putting me on read? Dude, I said I had a coach he likes texting Ryu more than K, and I think it's the same case for you. I think it's the same case for Ryu and D. <laughs> what did he say? What message? She had it's she has to make the decision. There's oh poor K if she gets uh, I don't want K to get beaten up. Oh dude, I don't to please make this stop. But it's just a prank, bro, so it doesn't matter. He's willing to take the consequence right now. Why? Or else he'll tell everybody else? That too, there's no evidence. I don't know, you please. Surely you're protecting her, right? She doesn't know. Would she? She wouldn't snitch. She won't snitch. She's gonna prove to everybody that she is the best girl by not snitching, no matter how bad it gets. Oh no! Don't. Are you serious? Is she gonna get tortured until she, she won't snitch until the very end? Don't snitch, just don't snitch, just don't snitch. I know she won't snitch. I, I know she won't snitch. Oh no, here comes the torture, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are they gonna do to her? What are they gonna do to her? It's just, it's not gasoline. It's, okay. it's water torture? Oh, you're just gonna make her freeze. It's fucking cold here. Oh, dude. It's actually so cold here. This is torture in itself. I thought it'd be like the tapping water torture where it just repeatedly taps water until you go crazy on your head, but... Yeah. Honestly, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this, is, this isn't this is bad, but I would prefer this than her get beaten the fuck up by Albert, right? Like, this is still bad, but just don't hurt her. She's getting hurt, but like, you, you know what I mean, right? You are pushing the boundaries, my man. He's justifying his cruelty. What's the next stage? What? Oh, what are you gonna? She's already freezing. Huh? Put a cloth over her head. It's just more water. I guess it would just make it even more freezing. The fact that it's just a constant... I don't know. It's almost like you're drowning in the mask itself too. Because it's water filling up. She, he, she's fucking... He, he, Ryuin is waterboarding K right now. This is... Still? It's, it's fucked? But she's not getting her arms or legs broken, right? Albert's not going in crazy town on her yet. So, you don't have time, Kiyotaka. You need to move. You need to move. But how is he going to know? K, say something. But if he does, Ryun will check the phone. It'd be too obvious. Kiyopo, you got to save K. Do you even know she's in danger? She doesn't. Is he actually going to cut through the scar? I, 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 no, 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 no. Is that a cliffhanger? Don't. It's it's a fucking cliffhanger. That's the episode. Okay. I, it's two outcomes. Two outcomes. The happy ending is the hero shows up. Ayanokoji shows up, saves K somehow, even though there's so many people out there outnumbering Ayanokoji, and we get a low, we, we we get out. But does not kind of reveal who Ayanokoji is as the mastermind. Maybe that's necessary for him to get back into the game. That's the I, that that's the hopeful outcome. Right, and even then, even then, that kind of sucks for us because Anakoji's identity is revealed. Shitty outcome, the one that I might think actually might go through. K endures this torture by herself, doesn't snitch the entire time, endures it, and only later does Anakoji figures out what happened to K, and then goes back into battle. Man, I like Ryun as a villain. I think he's a charismatic and a compelling villain, but when he does underhanded tactics like this, and this is on character, he's done this from the beginning. And I try to kind of look away whenever that kind of shit happens because of what he was able to do in like end of season one where he fucking went, <laughs> he went like caveman by himself, survived out there by himself, even had grew up facial hair and, and deceived everybody. That was amazing. But when he resorts to torturing poor people that can't even protect themselves, <laughs> it's hard for me to watch, dude.
thankfully, so far, it hasn't been that bad, even though it's been terrible, right? It's like a fucking freezing cellar here. They're pouring water. They're fucking waterboarding her. And now it looks like based on a knife and based on what he knows about her past about getting bullied, I wouldn't doubt it if he slices open that old scar that she has on her ribcage. All this because Kay got involved with Anakoji. Isn't this Anakoji? Didn't Anakoji say that he would protect her no matter what? If anything would happen, he would save her? Maybe I'm unreasonable, being unreasonable right now for pitting this to Anakoji. But like, man... Or K. Oh, sh <laughs> man. But if she actually falls through, and if she actually endures all this without snitching once, I can definitely see what everybody says in the light novel. She is like the top rated uh, female character in the series. Beyond loyal. This is. Could you even say love, maybe, towards Ayano Koji? Does he even feel that way towards her? I fucking hope so after this. Dude, <sighs> I. Not like it hasn't like this 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 torture scene hasn't ended yet, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe Anokuchi does come to save her, even though it reveals his identity. But if he does that, he will redeem. You know, I, it would be redeeming for him, and I wouldn't hate him as much for letting Kay into the situation. Is this even really her fault? I mean, his fault, <sighs> kind of. He did get Kay involved, but he did prote promise to protect her. Maybe Kay, Kay should have texted Anakoji about the situation, but then again, we did cut ties and maybe Anakoji was a little bit too... He did say this is the last time we talked, maybe K thought, maybe there's no point talking to him at this point. <laughs> He's going to fucking go on karaoke with the study group right now, dude, while K gets tortured. Oh my god, dude. Ugh. Okay, ignore... Well, uh, maybe a happy ending happens next episode. We hope to fucking god Anakoji comes. Let's focus on the positive things that happened in this episode, and that is Dragon Boy! Koenji leaves as soon as Ryuan enters the scene. Koenji's like, I'm gonna fuck out of here. I don't got time for this bullshit. I got a date to go. Koenji handles himself like a pro. Never gets irritated. Completely acts as if he's on the upper hand, even though he's crowded by everybody, right? Even when Ryu he made Ryuan hold up the mirror while he was combing his hair. <laughs> Pretty disrespectful. Then again, Ryuan didn't. Oh, it slipped. He did break the mirror. And I bet that mirror actually did cost more than some of the fucking tuition at the school. But... Koenji did not lose his cool, not even once. I don't know where Dragon Boy term came from. Dragon? Why? And, and the fact that Ryun got so upset at that word. Does Koenji know something about the past of Ryun? Do they go back? I don't know. There's some kind of, I don't know, something that happened to Ryun that's public knowledge. Because as soon as she says Dragon Boy, I just like snickered. She's like, oh, I like that. I'm taking that from me. And she says, hey, Dragon Boy Kun, right? I've never seen Ryun that upset or frustrated when he talks to anybody. Most of the time. He keeps his cool. Everybody else is making the face that Ryuan himself makes whenever he's talking to this uh, Sakayana game, right? Whenever Aris is talking to Ryuan, he is so upset, so frustrated, completely lost his composure, right? It's it's the complete opposite of how Ryuan usually conducts his like little little interviews, his meetings, right? So Sakayana Gyarisu, she definitely has. She probably is. In terms of the end game, probably a villain. I say villain. Maybe she's an ally. I don't know, but. Clearly, that goes beyond Ryuan. Ryuan has been like our first main villain boss for the longest time since season one. And we still haven't really taken care of him yet. I'm not sure if we need to. Maybe he'll become an ally in the future after we get everything sorted out. But Arisu is very, very interesting. The blonde guy beside Arisu too, very interesting. They said Class A is ruled by like two figureheads at the moment. It's not Baldi, right? It's Arisu and the blonde haired guy. Haven't seen much of the blonde haired guy other than season two. The way I can't believe Ryuan actually kicked Arisu. Like, he did like a flying somersault kick. I'm like, if you call me that Dragon Boy again, I'll kill you. It's like, yeah, you're gonna end someone's life because of a fucking nickname. Like, Jesus Christ. Before I was talking about how we're gonna handle Kushi Del with Ryuan, do we have to kill her? But I'm like, whoa, 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 this is not kind of anime, right? This is just like a my game's anime. This is like real life as real as it can get, right? We don't kill people here. And then he was, I'll fucking kill you. He was serious. He kicked her. Doing like a backflip, right? And then the blonde guy takes care of it. Takes the hit. Falls down. Nothing happened. I just happened to trip. No, there's nothing going on here, Susanne. Susanne at that point realizes, oh shit. I'm dealing with some people that are clearly beyond me. I can't even handle these guys right now. The way that Koenji conducted himself the entire time, keeping his cool, constantly acting as if he was on top. Making insults like, if you were smart enough, you could figure stuff out, right? I don't think, like, he just like, made half, he made very, he threw, sh Ryuan threw shade at Pseudo thinking, I don't need opinions from someone dumb. 
but so did Koenji thinking. If you if 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 this is all you can like conclude, it kind of like shows your intelligence, Ruben. Like this is as smart as you are, I guess. And Ryuun at that point kind of admits, you know what? Maybe you are right. Maybe you're just a fucking crazy wild card that has nothing to do with this. And it's true. Koenji did specifically say he has no intention of helping out. Everything he's done was for himself and nothing else. The luxury yacht special test, that was just for his own leisure because he had limited time on the yacht. He has he doesn't have time to be bogged down by these fucking dumbass meetings. No, he wants to use a nice gym, the nice pools, and the nice bars, man. He doesn't got time for that. That's why he acted. Man, if only we can get more situations where Koenji acts independently and that in byproduct helps the class out. In the previous season 2, Koenji didn't really do anything other than in like episode 1, he's saying, Fuck you, old lady! I'm sitting down here! I'm not moving for you, right? And then nothing, nothing really. And then at the end, he did some really cool things in the um, the island arc where he was like showing off his Tarzan and you know, flexing his body in, 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 in the uh, the luxury boat. Nothing beyond that. And in this season 2, did, what, did, did he do something in the beginning of the season? Mm, not really. Not really, but he has shown up. No, I mean, I mean, he did do something in the beginning. It's not the, like a special test in the in the yacht, but like, he only shows up in the beginning and the end of seasons. I hope that it's not over for him. I want him to do something more. If I mean, I'll take what I can get. We did get an amazing Koenji line calling in Dragon Ball. I don't got time for you. You're stupid. This this is the best that you can think of. I got a date. I don't, I'm out making Ryu and hold a mirror. Man, that was so good. That was so good, but. How did Arisu figure out that Ryuin would be hunting down Koenji at this time? Probably has eyes, probably has like spies tracking Ryuin, right? It's not just a convenience that Arisu happened to show up with her like group of four. And like Arisu kind of, she can't defend herself. She's already a cripple. She has the blonde guy to defend him. But if Albert went all out, I'm thinking like, you know, Arisu can't defend herself. It could be a bad, I'm sure she'll always have like a bodyguard or something, but Things could end up pretty bad for her if she gets a little bit too cocky. But no matter what, it seems like Arisu always has the upper hand on Ryuin. Judging by how Ryuin reacts, always such a front, like a frustrated, strained look on his face. The same face that Suzume has whenever Ryuin is talking to Suzume, right? He's getting played. He says that it's not his her time yet. He'll crush her later. But I wonder if he'll even get there. Because Ayano Koji will probably do something that'll end Ryuin's game. I'm not sure. But, it, when I think about the future between Anakoji and Ryuin, like, I was talking, and again, in the previous episodes, I mentioned, like, would Ryuin want Anakoji and Suzume to be expelled? And you guys said no, actually. He has a lot of fun. He directly says it in this episode, akin to first love, my heart is racing. He's so excited. He has somebody to play this mastermind, this, like, this little game of poker face with, right? Maybe there's a future where Ryuin and Anakoji can become acquaintances. Maybe, maybe... F I mean, they are, they are, they're a better ship than KQK right now, but, but I'm saying like, seriously, could they work in the future together? The common ally becomes, sorry, the common, the villain becomes a common ally, sorry, the villain becomes an ally against a common, a vil, uh, common uh, enemy in the future. It'd be pretty cool if Ryuin does come around and we can see eye to eye and Anakoji and Ryuin are able to play hand to hand as spy masters together. It would be pretty interesting. I think that could be the case. I haven't given up on that future, right? Because, like, what happened to Ryuin after we beat him? What does even beat even mean? Get further ahead in the class? I guess he'll continue chase? I don't know. I feel like that he could become a supporting role for Anakoji in the future, maybe. But the funniest part is him saying, My heart is racing akin to first love. <laughs> oh, no one has made Ryuin's heart go doki doki like this in a long time. And for his pleasure, he will crush K. Ugh. The way that he justifies his actions by saying everything is for his own pleasure. I'm, maybe there's a little bit of cognitive dissonance going on in his head. Maybe this amount of cruelty. You have to actively suppress in the back of your mind that guilty conscience. Maybe he still has it. I don't know. But I want to know his, more about Ryuin's like, backstory and the why he was so upset about being called Dragon Boy. Why does the relation of Dragon to him really make him upset? Boy, I can understand, you know, kind of saying... Like little bro, for example, like you don't want to be like looked down upon like that. But why the word dragon specifically? Is that his like uh, what's it called? Astrology sign horoscope? I, I don't I don't fucking know, man. I hope we get more into that next episode. Maybe even Anakuji will call him Dragon Boy, and then <laughs> Ryuin gets upset in the next episode. I don't really know. But hey, 
If you stick around this long, if you don't enjoy my reaction, you already know what I'm gonna say. Check out the other videos and playlists on my channel. If you watch another video immediately after this one, it helps you to go push out my small channel to recommend so that I have a chance to compete with some of your favorite reactors. Until next time, guys, take care.